Hi everybody, it's Malika and it's been ages since I've uploaded um, to my YouTube channel and in fact it's been a good few months that it's taken me to muster up the courage to share what I'm about to share with you today. But I'm at a place where my belief of what I want to share is greater than my fear. And so the time is right for me now to to let you know what's been going on for Millie. What's been going on for Millie B? I first started sharing videos in 2014 when I was going through um, a journey of being diagnosed with breast cancer. And my intention was to share as much of that journey as I could. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about myself, about my <clears throat> desires, about my beliefs, about everything that was important to me and everything that was no longer important to me. See, the thing is when you're faced with, um, with a situation like that, puts a whole lot into perspective. So in 2014, I received a diagnosis of um, breast cancer. And where I was there was a complete fear, complete fear and I was very um, unaware, unaware of what that meant. I had no first-hand experience. Um, no, nobody close to me had been through um, cancer. Um, so I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea what was to follow. And what happened is I went through, um, I literally threw my hands up in the air and said to the doctors, to the oncologists, to the surgeons, fix me, fix me, help me, get this out of me, please dear God. And I ended up going through um, eight rounds of chemotherapy um, which was really tough, which was really, really tough. And even for somebody who's as positive as me, as motivated to see the best in everything, um, there were very, very dark days and times for me and my family um, who I support. I had a former set to me, actually had something called a Dieppe flat operation where they use another part of your um, body tissue to reconstruct your um, breast. The recovery for that was hell. Um, I had to really draw on all the strength I had. I, had, I qu questioned so much of my, um, in my beliefs, of my... Um, believe in myself uh, for, to have the ability to pull through something like that. And being a mother of two young children who at the time were, were three and um, six was really, really heart-wrenching. You know, you want everything to be good for them and this was a time where I didn't know I didn't know what to expect. That was followed by um, radiotherapy. I think I had 15 rounds of radiotherapy, which really just sapped all the energy out of me. Here's what happened. Um, I was left with, obviously, huge scars. Um, I was left with neuropathy in uh, peripheral neuropathy in my fingertips, my feet felt like I was walking on um, fire. Let's call that a really traumatic, bumpy ride, which were it not for my beliefs that are so strong in seizing the day, in always looking for the positive in life, it would have been much tougher, extremely tough to look forward to not stay stuck in the moment. In that time, it's actually really hard to process everything whilst you're in that zone of fight, 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 go, 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 battle, battle, battle. I'm, a, I'm gonna beat this, I'm, I'm gonna beat this cancer. But I knew I was gonna get through it, whatever it took. 
and I did. And I got through it, and I wanted to help people. I wanted to educate myself on, on, on the skills I needed to be able to help others move past that feeling of being stuck. I decided to train as a life coach, and I started coaching most amazing. I've had the most amazing clients that um, really made my new career path so worthwhile. It's never felt like working doing what I do. I've worked with women up to now, and there's nothing more rewarding than seeing somebody else take the reins, take control of their lives, and really follow through. So I made some beautiful choices. We got married, so I'm actually Mrs. Brooks now. Um, we had the most amazing, amazing dream-like wedding on the beach in St. Kit. I was no longer willing to listen to that little voice in my head, that little voice that kept saying, um, you're not ready, or maybe next time, this time next year. Because the reality is having had this big wake up call, if you like, um, made me see things in a huge different light. I'm grateful, grateful for the things my breast cancer journey taught me. So 2014, I received my diagnosis. 2015 was spent recovering from the treatment I'd received for the most part of 2014. And 2016 um, was really sailing high for me in that I started a, an online tribe, I um, really began to show up in a big way. Um, I, I was living day by day on purpose and following my intuition and loving it. Absolutely loving it. I can truly say I have lived in the moment. I have learned to be present and love the small things, the simple things. At the end of the summer holidays, 2016, the school summer holidays, I started to feel as if I had like a, a kind of infection. That's why, I, that's why I believed I had, it's an infection. Because when I was breathing deeply, I could feel a bit of a pain, it was uncomfortable. Um, so I asked, I went to my doctors, I received antibiotics, didn't do a thing. I went back to, um, I went back several times really and ended up requesting an x-ray um, which came back with signs that were concerning my doctor. In fact, I remember being told to come in for the results um, and I had my children with me and I said, you know, can I come in tomorrow? Um, and they said, no, I think you need to come in now and I knew something was up. And this was, this was around last November. So that's 26, November 2016. And I went and I received the worst, the worst news I could ever hope for. Um, my doctors had confirmed that what was showing up, why I was having difficulty taking these full breaths was that there was some tumor there was a tumour that they could see on my lung and they were pretty sure that the tumour was cancerous and I broke down. broke down. I was there with my two beautiful children and I tried to hold it together as you do but um, I broke down because this wasn't the first time for me and as scary as the first time was I knew that this time it meant something bigger. 
I would fall into the category of stage four, metastatic cancer. Having having only um, having only a few months earlier watched most courageous woman who inspired me pass away from exactly the same thing. The fear was real. So that's my reality. That's my reality. And what happens? I received that news. That I received the confirmation of that news um, around Christmas time, 2016. When the, when the doctors suggested that they want me to go for further rounds of chemo, and basically um, the chemo wouldn't um, guarantee that it would disappear or that it, it would completely clear my cancer, but it would give me a chance of um, living a little bit longer. That's, that's basically how it's put. Um, and if the cancer, if the treat, treatment didn't work, the idea was to try another type of treatment and another type of treatment until there was no further treatments possible. Hmm. I wasn't okay with that. I wasn't okay with that. Um, I remember my first diagnosis, my last ever treat, my last treatment of chemotherapy. I remember saying to God, to my higher self, that I would never, ever, ever, ever put my body, my mind, my spirit, my soul through chemotherapy again. And so when the doctors um, suggested that would be the plan of action, I literally felt this heat and like it was just a burning sensation within my whole body. And it was a full on no. It was a full on hell to the no. I'm going to go and I'm going to find that source to tap into. I'm going to dig into my faith. I am going to do every single thing within my power to manage this. To manage this in a natural way, to manage this in a way that doesn't compromise my ability to function in a way that I feel at peace with, in a way that I am happy, confident, assured about. And that's what I've done. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. But you could call me the comeback queen. You could call me the, the, the expert in resilience. Call me the goddess of celebration because I know and I've, I, have, I have no doubt in my mind that I have fallen flat on my face before and I have come back through my faith, through my love of life and my amazing support system, my beautiful friends and family that have been there to that have honored my decision, however scary it might seem to them, through my the tribes that I have online, through the people I meet at events and every day who see me for who I am, not for a label, for a diagnosis or as as a patient, as a, I know I'm in the best place and I have no doubt that I'm making the right choice for me.
the right choice for me, right? It's you must know that whatever choices you make must be okay by you. Be right with yourself. Be right with your God. Be right with your belief. And everybody else can really go and jump because at the end of the day, you are the only person, you are the only person who you have to be right with. I want to invite you to come along with me on this journey of um, self-discovery, of learning about all the beautiful resources we have available to us you know, this isn't just about cancer. This isn't just about metastatic breast cancer. This isn't, it's a message that's bigger than this. It's about learning to understand how to manage your mind, how to manage your body, what you put in your body, how to live a life less stressful how to really just be in tune with our beautiful bodies that are there to take care of us, that are created to heal themselves, you know. So I'm asking you to subscribe to my channel where I'll be posting regular updates. And I hope to inspire you to, to make one change, to whether it's to celebrate life fully every single moment, learn how to be present in your life and your relationships or learn with me how to nourish your body all these things that are out there they're so good for us but we don't know we don't know because we're too busy we're just too busy so let's get a bit unbusy let me show you the way thank you for your time thank you for your support and your love And let's go and make this life freaking awesome.